Howdy mates, top of the morning to ya. How are we doing today on this Sunday, June 9th, 2024? You may be wondering, what is my, or where is my next location? Am I in Michigan? Am I in Minnesota? Or am I in Canada? No, to all of those. As a matter of fact, this is indeed in the state of Nebraska. Quite surprising, isn't it? You would not normally associate a body of water with Nebraska. But as a matter of fact, just ahead of you here is the Missouri River that winds through the state. And actually just across the Missouri River is South Dakota. I made a point during this trip to explore some parts of Nebraska. And while it is true that much of the state is filled with plains, the Great Plains, which is rather plain. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are indeed some hidden gems, such as this one. And noticeably, as I was walking up here, I noticed these guys. See this? Here is what is known as the Great Plains Yucca. And it's also known as Soapwood Yucca. Part of the reason why it's given that name has to do with the chemical compound that is found in their roots, known as saponins. What the indigenous tribes around here used to do, such as the Sioux, they would extract the root, beat on it for a pulp, and what would happen is the saponins would release sort of like a, a bubbly texture. And oftentimes, they would use that as a way of cleansing their hair or even skin. Hence, how it got the name of saponin, or soapwood. And another interesting feature about yucca is that it's also a root vegetable as well that is indeed edible. And so, this particular plant is reliant on the yucca moth for pollination. You can't have one without the other, as it is the only pollinator for this plant. But they are known for their creamy white flowers here, in sort of a, what you call rashim formation, or inflorescence. And yucca is a distant cousin to our tubers, also known as our potatoes. Now another interesting feature about the plant is you go down towards the stem and they produce these leaves that are distinctive. They have, they're kind of bayonet shaped. Now, the reason how they're able to survive in such conditions, you can see it all around us, it has to do with the fact that they have a deep root system. Because most of this type of land is very arid and dry. And so they have the versatility to survive out here because of that very deep root system that can go as low as 15 or 20 feet. So I'm going to break this up into a second video.